everybody. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. Hello. I'm Roy Kennedy. And I'm Mike Delicio. Merry Christmas to everybody, and welcome to our 12 Games of Christmas list, where we talk about games that you can buy for others, or in the case of today's list, <clears throat> probably for you. <laughs> uh, so this is interesting. We do two lists, very similar in a sense. We have strategy and then advanced strategy, and really it's kind of, you know, one could go on one list or the other, but yeah. these are games with lots of strategic decisions, and then the advanced strategy are ones that we think are heavier than these. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. You could probably take one game for the other. We're actually giving you two for the price of one is what it right. is. Right. right. And, yeah, that's that's what you should do for your friends, too. Or have <laughs> them do for you. Mm. And probably but if you're watching me, I, this, you might not even play games. And this was just sent to you by someone who said, hit, <laughs> hit. Uh -huh. I think this list for me, it's a good one. It's... Um, you know, sort of a step above family games, right? That's sure. the idea. Family games being sort of, you know, uneven playing field, some luck, uh, games that you can play with anybody. These are a little more thinky, a little more uh, to crunch your way through, right? To chew mm -hmm. your way through. Well, with that being said, Z, start us off. Here we go. All right, let's kick things off here with my first pick, Fort. Fourth is a small card game from Leader Games in which you are uh, kids and all you want to do is build a fort, have toys, and eat pizza. That's what you're doing in the game. Uh, but you are going to be drawing cards, utilizing those cards to take different actions, trying to build up the fort, to collect specific things around the table. The players around the table, after you take an action, may follow that action if they have an appropriate card. And ultimately, you are trying to race people to the most points. It's very attractive. It's very stylized, but I think it's gorgeous. It's engaging. It's a very small package, like I said. And the game that comes in that package feels bigger than that box. I really like Fort. I recommend you check this one out. Or it makes a fantastic gift as well. Uh, so have it both ways. Buy one for you and give one away. Okay, my first strategy game is a game that really has become a phenomenon in modern board gaming, and that is Wingspan. In Wingspan, all of the cards have a beautiful illustration of a bird, and you are playing these birds into one of three habitats. You're trying to collect the most diverse and beautiful array of birds into your aviary, and this is really a what's called an engine building game where you're trying to build off of the powers of previous birds that you've played and you're trying to trigger different abilities to gain the most points to reach particular goals at the end of the round. This is a game that just is so gorgeous on the table, stunning artwork, beautiful components, a really, really wide appeal. This is a game that even if you don't know anything about it, if you walk by at the table and you see this, it's gonna get your attention because it just looks so stunning on the table. It has brought people into this hobby that really maybe haven't played many modern board games, but there's a fair level of strategy to this game. It does take a little bit of thinking to do well. That is Wingspan. All right, so this one is a little bit lighter on the strategy side there, and that is Marvel Splendor. So basically in Marvel Splendor, you're going to be trying to collect different gems to collect different superheroes and hopefully get all of the gems to be able to get the Infinity Gauntlet and win the game after you have a certain number of heroes out. Um, it's all about trying to manipulate those gems and get things um, cheaper. The more heroes you get, the less expensive getting more heroes is going to be. So you're trying to figure out ways to manipulate that and have different strategic options there. This is a light one overall, but it's easy for a lot of different people to play, and that is Marvel Splendor. Okay, so let's jump away from Marvel, and now we're talking about the search for a mysterious planet. Planet X. Is there a planet out there in the skies? That's what this game's about. This is a deduction game. So if you like trying to figure out what something is, or in this case, where is Planet X, you'll enjoy this. This uses an app, which is free, downloadable app that works with the game. And everyone has a sky, and there's a basic and an advanced side, so you can make it even more difficult. And you get these clues. Here's where a comet is. Here's where a gas cloud is. Here is where empty space is. And as you get these clues, you're trying to figure out the rules of the scenario 
scenario. There are some rules that are always in play. That there are, for example, dwarf planets always come in pairs. But each scenario has other rules where they might say that planet X is definitely across from a comet. Okay, well, here's five comets. I've narrowed, narrowed down where planet X is. And you're slowly figuring out these clues and you're trying to figure it out faster than everyone else at the table. It's very crunchy to some degree, but I also don't think it's that complicated. You're just using the clues that you get to be the first person to solve a logical puzzle. If you like logic deduction style games, this is easily one of the best ones out there. Highly recommend it. The Search for Planet X. Second pick for me goes to Honey Buzz. Boy, there's been a lot of bees and honey games out there, haven't there? This one it has a lot going on in it, and it's gorgeous. One of the most beautiful ones. You are going to be building a pattern in front of you that triggers actions as you are finishing locations in your design in front of you. And as you trigger those actions, you collect honey. You are going to grow your hive. You are going to deliver honey to your forest friends. Lots going on. There's a market in there where you sell honey at a profit. Very engaging. Uh, it's got a lot to think about, and yet that comes coupled with this stunningly quick, gorgeously themed, fantastic looking game. And that marriage, I, I just adore. So Honey Buzz is a beautiful, beautiful game. One that should not be, uh, that should not go unrecognized. Shouldn't fly under the radar. Check it out. Okay, my next strategy game takes one of my favorite themes, that being of an underwater world. This is Aquatica. In Aquatica, you are trying to draft cards that are going to allow you to place them into your personal player board, and it has a very interesting mechanic where cards have different abilities on them. And as you raise these cards up, you're physically pushing them above a kind of a dual layer part of your board. As you push those cards up, you're triggering different abilities, and many times you can chain these off of each other. And they create some really satisfying turns where you're able to sit to, okay, I'm going to do this card that's going to allow me to do this. It's going to allow me to do this. I'm going to be able to get one of these characters for free. It's just a really nice looking game. It plays very, very quickly. It doesn't have a high rules overhead, but there's a fair level of strategy involved. You can kind of decide how you want to play your game from the beginning and then do everything you can to make that plan successful, or in my case, not always so successful, but a beautiful game, a lot of fun. That's Aquatica. This is another resource manipulation game, and that is Res Arcana. So you have a deck of different cards that can manipulate resources in all sorts of different ways, and you're trying to race to 10 points. You're just trying to figure out a way to manipulate that to happen. Um, there's all sorts of cards you can try to like race the other players to, to get to be able to build up a cool little engine with all the resources you have. And it's very interesting as you're getting these different spell sort of things or animating different characters and things like that to make things happen in the game for you. But it's all about racing to that 10 points. And that's why I think Res Arcana is a great strategy game. Do you like cats? Do you like quilts? I have to say I'm not a huge fan of either, and yet together they make a pretty good game. This is a very abstract game, Calico, and in this game you are taking pieces and putting them on this quilt, and you're trying to form groups of both colors and shapes and whatever other scoring is available in that particular game. So again, you're taking things and trying to figure out which tile is the best one for you at any point in time. The rules of Calico are very simple, but the strategy and in-depth thinking is really just off the charts. Every time I play it, I sit there and I'm thinking, Oof, what am I going to do next? What am I going to take next? And you almost sometimes see there's a little bit of push your luck. Like I want to make a big group of yellow here. So I really hope I draw another yellow. Or maybe this spot here, I want to be surrounded by one of every color. And so I'm hoping to find a purple color. But maybe I need to give up scoring that section so that I can score something else. You can't do everything in Calico. You can't score every possible combination. But you're trying to score as many as you can. So just very simple decisions but they're really tough and you'll sit there and uh, Calico might be one of those games that there's not a lot of talking because everyone's just sitting there thinking about what they want to do next, but it's definitely one I think you're going to come back to and play again. It also has a fun theme and really nice components, so highly recommend it, Calico. All right, my final pick for strategy games is a game called Mariposas from the same designer, Elizabeth Hargrave, as the incredible Wingspan. 
Well, this one's just as incredible. It's got a lot going on in it. You've, you've got uh, your butterflies migrating up towards the top of the United States. They are breeding. They are expanding. You are completing different objectives. And then they, at some point, need to turn around and start coming back down. That's the, the migratory pattern. It's so thematic and yet so thinky and engaging and a very lovely production as well. This is one that uh, just really sings. You can tell this thing has been polished to a high shine and I recommend it. So Mariposa is my final pick here. All right, Z, I get it. Butterflies are beautiful, but let's not forget the cats, shall we? Let's not forget the cats. My last game on the strategy list is Isle of Cats. And this is one of the recent polyomino games. And by that, I mean pieces that look like Tetris uh, style pieces from, uh, from years ago. There are a lot of board games that are using these types of pieces now. And Isle of Cats is one of the most recent examples where you are playing uh, as somebody who's trying to save these magical, beautiful cats from an island that is about to be destroyed. And so you have a player board that represents your ship. And you're trying to place these cats that lay in, if you've ever seen cats lay out around the house, they've got kind of these strange uh, positions they get into that in this case are polyomino shapes. You're taking these cats and you're placing them on your board and you're trying to do so in such a way that you get more points than your opponents. You also have a card drafting element to the game. There's a little economy to the game where you get a certain number of fish that you need to be able to pay for cards, but you also need those fish to do other things. So there's a fair amount going on, but it's not that difficult to teach. And at the end of the game, you have this really satisfying boat filled with polyomino, polyomino cats. And what can be better than that? So my final choice is Isle of Cats. My last one here is great for two players and also is very strategic, and that is Skulk Hollow. Basically, one character is going to be playing like these forest creatures and foxes and stuff, and another player is going to be playing like this giant behemoth monster that is basically attacking the forest. Um, and you're basically trying to take it out, and each side is going to have different cards they're going to be playing to manipulate whether they're moving or attacking and getting yourself in the right position to be able to take stuff out. It's really cool because the monster player has this board that you're actually going to put your characters on as you're moving up trying to attack it in different ways. So definitely an exciting two-player game that has a very charming theme and it's very strategic as well as you're trying to outthink your opponent and where they're going to be. So that is Skulk Hollow. All right, last game for me here is Godspeed. This takes the theme of, hey, we actually got to another planet, but so did all the other countries of the world. And so you're on this planet and trying to establish your colony. And you do that through what we call worker placement. You have different workers with numbers on them, and these workers can only go to different sections. And you are trying to get resources in this game, build these resources to build, uh, or use these resources to build various buildings that may give you special abilities, but definitely give you points. Godspeed is a game in which you are constantly working, trying to kind of somewhat cooperate with everybody, but at the same time, you want to beat them all badly because they're from countries, and you want your country to be number one and each country has a slight difference than the other countries each country will maybe might focus on a specific type of building you have special abilities that you'll get halfway through the game you have uh, laws and things that you will come up and you have to decide whether you're going to jump on board with that or save your precious resources to build buildings but at a possible cost to yourself that was some really cool components. This whole thing comes together in a really nice package. This is one of the games that came out this year that I thought was really good and not a lot of people talked about, but it's definitely a very interesting, like I said, worker placement game where you are constantly feeling like everyone else is going to go to the spots that you're going to. Of course, you're going to the spots they wanted to go to also. One that's very definite, a great gift for Christmas, that's Godspeed. Man, this is like, if you took these 12 games and put them on your shelf, that's a solid library, yep. right? I'd come really over and is. play. I I even like all these games, <laughs> for wow. the most part. That's, that's <laughs> high praise, Thomas. It's a great <laughs> list. This is a great list. I think that you're it right. Is. I think that this, this does a really good job of appealing to a very wide range of people. Like you said, Z, at the beginning, it's probably a step up from those family games. Right. But I do think that it also is a pretty accessible uh, list of games here. And this is great mm -hmm. for that gamer, you know. If there's someone mm -hmm. that's just getting, like, likes games, then this is the one to go for. Mm. 
And if you think these are too light for you, well, check out our advanced strategy list. If you think these are too complicated, check out our family game list or party game list. You're covered. We got lists going up all week long. Check them all out. Until then, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. I'm Roy Kennedy. And I'm Mike Delicio. Have fun buying games for yourself.